Hi all, in this third weekly space report, Starship news, Earth orbit tourism and the latest of Mars probes. As always, timestamps and links to sources are in the description below. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. And here we start on the Starship front for a change. Unfortunately, the viewing conditions for SN11 flight were horrible, and on top of that, the landing was even worse than the previous ones, ending with a mid-air explosion. There is virtually nothing verified to say about the explosion, so I will refrain myself from speculating at this point. What we can say, however, is that the flying phase of the test was very successful, not only because SN11, as its three predecessors, was right on target, but because since SN8, each Starship prototype seems to have tested another area of the flight during the very first moment of the descent. Thanks to these four test flights, the Starship autopilot is surely better prepared for the more ambitious flights to come. The orbit is still planned for July this year with SN20. Musk said he was confident the ascent would succeed, but conceded the return from orbit might take a few tries before success. Musk stated a few weeks ago that the super heavy booster will eventually have no legs and will get caught mid-air by the launch tower. One of our viewers reached out with an interesting information. Etienne, what is it you wanted to say? Yes, bonjour. My information is that this technique is already working. Uh, team uh, of engineers at Rhein University uh, already made a small scale model as the West France is leading the way in science and technology. Maybe we can watch the footage first. So the simulated booster is coming back and lands on this wire driven support with its grid fins. Very interesting and indeed it seems to be ahead of the competition. But correct me if I'm wrong, the best estimates for an Ariane booster returning back to the launch site are 2040, right? Uh, yes. Oh, I'm afraid they will be a little behind SpaceX then, by probably one or two decades. It's a recurring problem with Europe. There is a strong industry and a strong research sector, but they don't seem to articulate very well with each other, as they do in other parts of the world. Moments after the test, Elon Musk announced SpaceX is in dire need for many skilled workers in Boca Chica, or Starbase as he will name it. The plan being to construct 100 starships per year, that gives an idea of how busy the whole area will be as soon as the development phase ends. By the way, if that was really useful what I just shared with you, then I would love it if you would give this video a like. Just click the like button and thank you very much. The Resilient spacecraft, the Crew Dragon, currently docked at the ISS and used by the crew and team is not returned to the ground, and yet it is already planned for reuse. Around September the 15th, Inspiration 4 will be on board for a three-day touristic trip that will take them on a higher orbit than the ISS. The spacecraft's docking port, no longer needed, will be replaced by an observation dome for fabulous views. Virgin Galactic unveiled the third iteration of its suborbital touristic plane. Named the VSS Imagine, the main visual difference from the previous spacecraft will be the reflective frame, according to the company's press release. This sci-fi looking spaceship is to be delivered this summer for tests. Spaceport Cornwall that will host Virgin Orbit's flights was envisioned by Virgin Galactic as an expansion of its human space flight. But let's face it, the space tourists will all spend a tremendous amount of money to spend just a few minutes in space. The local government that funds the spaceport couldn't allow for that use of tax taxpayers' money and therefore dismissed the request. After SLS Core staged successful green run the last month, the final stacking has begun. The solid rocket boosters are now fully stacked and waiting for the main core. The stacking was made from the bottom up, which I think is the only way to go around. And now the whole thing looks a little bit silly, awaiting the core stage. After the success of the commercial cargo and commercial crew programs, both financially and technically, 
well, if you accept Boeing for now, NASA continues to move forward with a commercial destination program. $400 million are on the table to kick off the program that will provide NASA astronauts somewhere to go in LEO, or said otherwise, privately run space stations. The goal is to provide a cheap replacement for the ISS as it is starting to get old. It's then no surprise to hear that Sierra Nevada Corporation has decided to announce details regarding their commercial space station. They have developed an inflatable habitat system called LIFE that is declined in habitation, science or life support functions. Crew and cargo are to be delivered using Sierra Nevada Corporation spacecraft Dream Shade. Let us now head towards another planet, Mars. Perseverance is very close to be releasing the Ingenuity helicopter drone. The operations take a long time to ensure the drone doesn't flip over or worse, gets stuck under the rover. Once the drone is released, the rover has only 24 hours to clear the way or the solar panels won't be able to keep the battery charged. Trying to get at least some of the attention, the Curiosity rover took a wonderful selfie at Mount Merku under a slightly clouded sky. A little higher up, the joint ESA Roscosmos ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter is taking detailed pictures of a dune field in the center of the Lomonosov crater. The goal is to picture the evolution of the specific dune field during the year in order to better understand the dynamics involved. Still on Earth, but aimed at a target inside the asteroid belt, the Psyche spacecraft began its final assembly at NASA's JPL. Powered by an ion engine with huge solar panels, the spacecraft is set to launch here in August next year and study a metal-rich asteroid. Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun, is emitting X-rays. That's what has been discovered using the Chandra X-ray Observatory. It's not yet known what caused the emission, but scientists are thrilled at the discovery. And let's end the space report with an overview of the Roman mission. Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, by its full name, will launch in the mid-2022. Its large field of view will enable it to observe the crossing of a planet in front of its star thus revealing it to the probe. It is predicted that NASA's Roman mission is likely to detect 100,000 exoplanets using this method. And that concludes this third space report. What do you think of this format? Is it too short, too long, or right on the spot? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of the future space reports. Here on your left is a video the YouTube algorithm has chosen for you, and on the right you will find my other space reports. This is Getting to Space, signing off.